Yellow Jackets 4-0. And how about the weekend Emma Mingini had? On Friday night, her second collegiate game, she had four, the five RBI, and a five to two win over Villanova. She was one of the emerging stars from this Buzz Classic weekend. Tech went 4-0. And can't forget Auburn Dupree either made her college Dupree, or debut, I should say, as she races out to left field. The starters taking the field here at Mewborn Field. Freshman breakout weekend. Yeah, that's what it was. All across the country, freshmen hit the field. And it's, you know, hats off to these players for, for jumping in and uh, really, really getting their career going, mm -hmm. bringing their fresh energy, fresh perspective to their teams. It's really special. Talk about first year players, first year coach, Lindsay Fico. Here's how her lineup shapes up. Annie Potter, Elisa Rosado, a couple of uh, first team pre or I should say, Andy Potter, a second-team all-conference preseason selection. Lisa Rosado was first team, so they'll lead the charge at the one and two spots in the lineup for a, a Mercer squad that on opening weekend struggled a little bit, faced some stiff competition, hit 271 as a group, but uh, struggled to put up runs, and they could struggle today because Blake Nelliman put together a dominant opening weekend. She had 13 strikeouts in the season opener against St. Joe's and then was nearly just as good allowing one run in five innings in a uh, mercy rule win over Villanova in day two. She's 2-0, 0.58 ERA this year. There are her numbers from last season through a no-hitter to close out the year. Nearly had a no-hitter on opening day, allowed just one hit. It was a solo home run. So here we are, first midweek of the season, Georgia Tech and Mercer. It is the 70th all-time meeting between these two schools. Georgia Tech has won 54, the first 69, and the first pitch is high. Ball one, we are open for business in Midtown Atlanta. Your game time temperature, 63 degrees. Time of first pitch, five after five. A big cut there on that second offering from Annie Potter. Shortstop hitting, I should say hit 274 last year. And so far in her first five games of 2022, four for 16 with a triple. Love to see a leadoff who comes out swinging. Two, two strikes near and around the zone. Two good hard cuts fouling the ball off. Brought the bat around just enough. Fouled away the high rise ball. And that was really where Blake went for nearly all of her strikeouts, 13 of them against St. Joe's, 12 of which were swinging. And I bet nine or 10 of them at least were on that rise ball either over the plate or out and up. Where will she go here? Tries to go low. She throws it so well, and she mixes it. See, that's the thing about Nelliman, and a lot of times up ball pitchers will locate to a side of the plate, so they'll, they'll work either the inside or the outside portion of the plate, mix it up, and then they'll ladder up. And so it can be really difficult to identify when that pitch is, is, is flat or when it's going to be rising up on you. And there is Blake's 20th strikeout of the season. <laughs> That was gas. Gas. And that's just it. it. It moves just enough that if your timing isn't absolutely perfect, if you're locating, if your eyes aren't absolutely perfect, it's going to be really difficult to do something with. Elisa Rosado, junior from Plano, Texas, preseason all-Southern Conference first team selection this year, has started nearly every game of her Mercer career, year three. Takes a called strike. One for eight to start her season with four strikeouts. Mercer went one and four in their five games down at the Joanne Graff Classic. They lost their first game in 10 innings against Loyola Chicago. 
went on to play Florida State and Kennesaw State, lost both of those games, played Loyola Chicago a second time and lost, but then beat them the third time to close out the weekend. Swing and a miss. Down goes Rosado. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Nellman. She's picking up where she left off this weekend. Yeah, and getting, getting all of those strikes on that outside part of the plate. Auburn Dupree in left field for Georgia Tech. Bailey Zeitler at second base. And 1 0 on Diamond Williams. Junior from Grovetown, Georgia. In her third year as a Bear. This is a Mercer team that ran a lot and historically has run a lot. They've got a little more power in this year's group than what they normally have. They stole 71 bases last year in 47 games. Which is an impressive stat if you're, <laughs> not, if you're not one that typically keeps up with the, the average steals. That's, that's a high number. Yeah, well, for context, they were caught only seven times. Yeah, which makes it even more impressive. But again, this team, again, her first year coach, Lindsey Fico, a little more balanced power and speed. Two and two, and Nellman now strike away from punching out the side. <laughs> On the outside corner, Nelliman. Strikes out the side. Williams looking to end the first. Here's a look at Coach Eileen Morales' starting lineup. Couple of preseason all ACC selections at the top. Emma Kauf and Trisha Awald. Trisha Awald. <laughs> How does this sound? She reached in 13 of 16 plate appearances this weekend. She's batting second. Emma Kauf, not too bad herself, hit 533 with four extra base hits. And she takes ball one from Riley Hickok, junior from Warner Robins, Georgia, making her third start of the season. It's such a tricky spot to be in because you don't want to give Kauf a free base as the leadoff. And you don't want to pitch to AWOL because she'll get at <laughs> least two bases. AWOL and Kalf combined for eight extra base hits and six walks on opening weekend as Kalf rips it. A diving snag made. Kenley Harvey, what a highlight play! Kenley Harvey. This is a beautiful play. This would be a spectacular play if it was to her forehand. But this is to her backhand. Take a look as she's diving backwards in the infield. Snagging this on a really hard hop and then turning around, getting momentum to make the throw against Kalf, who's a speedy, a speedy hitter. So, I mean, go ahead and hashtag it, top 10. That might be the play of the day. Trisha Awal takes an off-speed strike one. I love this about Kenley Harvey, by the way. <laughs> they asked her, who's your favorite softball player back when she was in high school? And said, Any anybody under 5'3". <laughs> she stands 5'2". Low ball one on Trisha Awal. Making her 132nd consecutive start. First team all conference last year, led the league and on base percentage at 555. For how loud she plays, she's reason or relatively soft spoken. Yeah, you would you would never guess. Uh -huh. It's usually like that. She's so like humble, just happy to be there. And she'll take another walk. That's her sixth of the year. 
And the baton passed back to Mallory Black. Yeah, Hickok obviously being very conservative and throwing around the zone to Awald. Started out off, off the plate outside, ball tailing away, and then started to throw a curve ball to try to bring it back on the plate when she was behind in the zone. Ball one on Mallory Black. Uh, Hickok, however, really struggled to throw strikes this past weekend. She had 10 walks in just 11 innings, only two strikeouts. She also hit a batter and had a couple of wild pitches. That off speed, though. Yep. I'll tell you what, that, that might be a difference maker pitch. Because this in the two times that she's thrown it here today, it looks good. In the dirt, and Awald takes off for second. She's in the scoring position. That gives Mallory Black an opportunity. It squirts through Tori Ash. Mallory Black thrust into the three hole this weekend after spending most of her freshman year batting the bottom half of the lineup. She acquitted herself quite well, I thought. Five for 11, five walks, no strikeouts. Three and two. Not to mention most of her hits were multiple base hits. Yep. Three, two. That's fouled out of play. Sam, it, you could take us inside the mind of Mallory here. You know, when she learns, hey, you know, I'm hitting three hole for this team, and knowing what they lost from the outfield last year, does she feel that on her shoulders a little bit? I would say this is a unique circumstance for that because typically you can think of Mallory in this case. She's going to have the mindset of a five hitter traditionally. And that kicks off the glove of Rebecca Laudino and right. Awald's going to come around and score, and Mallory Black comes through. Yeah, and so, so right there is the perfect case of you just faced Awald and gave her a free pass. You're going to throw something around the zone to Black. And, and here she's battled into a full count. You don't want to walk her. So what do you do? You throw a belt high, you know, thigh high pitch over the plate, and, and she's going to get a lot of that. So where normally you would throw your best stuff against a three-hole hitter, you can't afford to do that here. Because you're going to be focused on getting out Kauf and Awald right before you. George Tech scores again in the first inning, Sam. That has been a, a routine phenomenon here in 2022. That's four straight. You know what, you, what they say, Wiley. You got to score to win. They do say that. They do say that. Not many people speak against that. <laughs> I don't see how you could, there's, honestly. It's one of those where there's there, there's there's not two sides to that argument. No, it's, it's that'll stand up. That's, it, yeah. that's there's not much else you can do, I guess. Sarah Beth Allen did a lot of helping Georgia Tech score. She drove in six runs this weekend, second most on the team behind Emma McGinney. And she too, in a in an unfamiliar spot, she's. Started every game this year after having just one at bat last year. And now Riley Hickok and Tori Ash are going to talk things over. Yeah, I think you think about, too, some of the big hitters that are no longer in this top half of the lineup for the Jackets. So, you know, you, you don't have Roper, you don't have Stanford, so you got to bring up some talent. Yep. And that's the whole name of the game. Recruit, recruit them, bring them in, get them some experience, turn them over into a tenured player. Top performer. Three and zero count. That's another walk, and again the walks. That was really what jumped out to you about that stat line from Hickok. And admittedly, she's in a tough spot. I, those who follow Mercer softball are, are well aware, but the Bears are without the services of their top two pitchers. That would be Ashlyn Donner and Bailey Pattison. They were in a uh, car accident over the holidays. And they are recovering. Uh, they are in a stable condition. But uh, softball right now is, is not 
part of their equation. As that one slashed just inside the third base bag foul. First and foremost, we're so relieved that Ashland and Bailey are okay and that their recovery process is ongoing. Absolutely. And your heart just yeah. goes out to them. Yeah, if they're listening out there, we wish you all the best. And we're thinking about you. And we spoke about this before the game, so before we went on the air, but, you know, first and foremost, grateful for the health, grateful for... Sure. Um, you know, no, no serious life stuff interfering. But then you get to the softball part of it, and all of a sudden, Mercer's got very little experience on their pitching staff. Riley Hickok is the only returning pitcher now without the services of Ashlyn Donner and Bailey Pattison. And then you've got two freshmen. As it appears, Sarah Beth Allen was picked off there. Got a little too far off the bag on that wild pitch. She'll head back to first. Yeah, and I think if you take a look at this play, ball off the catcher. Would have loved to have seen Black be aggressive uh -huh. and go ahead and go. I think that's maybe what happened there. Um, could have gone either way, but. And a laser into center field, down for a base hit, racing around third. Mallory Black is in to score. 2 nothing. Georgia Tech, Emma McGinney, her team leading ninth RBI. And this is that kind of electric performance that we were talking about from McGinney. Coming up in a, in a two strikes or two out situation. Well, you know, coming up with one out, <laughs> have your player get picked <laughs> off down there. And then just a nice little piece of simple to contact line drive hitting. It's two runs in for Georgia Tech, two outs. And getting it first in Jin Saleo. How many times do you think we'll see her in Sports Center this season? They're going to ask me how many times I'm going to see her this week. <laughs> <laughs> Already has one appearance on the year. Made a sensational snag of a line drive on Saturday against St. Joe's and doubled off the runner at second base. I want one on Saleo. Such a presence at the shortstop spot and Offensively, pretty good weekend. <laughs> Five for 11. But on the whole, Sam, it seemed like Georgia Tech, I don't want to say a perfect weekend. I think that last game against St. Joe's where they let a 4-1 lead slip away, they came back to win. You know, certainly some things to work on there, but. Rocked into right, splits the outfielders all the way to the wall. McGinney's rounding third, Saleo's at second, and now McGinney darting back. She got a late stop sign there from Coach Morales. I think with two outs, she wanted to try and push it, but it just wasn't going to happen. Yeah, I think keep extending the inning out. You have Zeitler, an experienced hitter coming up to the plate. Certainly let's take advantage of that, see if we can stretch this out into two more runs. Might be the attitude there, but Saleo going down to get a, a ball yes. lower in the zone, knowing that you might not get a whole lot to hit. If if Hickok is having a difficult time throwing strikes, you can only assume that if you if you do want to hit, which of course you do, um, anytime you get something hittable, you got to just pull the trigger and go. Uh -huh. There is Coach Lindsey Fico in her first season. Got the job in June. Brought in a few players of her own. And between that and the inherited team, they feel like they can have some success in the Southern Conference. This is not a team that, that's been perennially in the cellar either. Um, you had coach Stephanie DeFeo, who spent eight years at Mercer, winning this coach in school history. And they weren't necessarily winning the Southern Conference the last couple of years, but they finished in fourth in both 2021 and 2019, so still within striking distance at the top. Yeah, and I think that's something that's pretty underrated when you think about and talk about components of a winning team is 
experience with winning. Yes. Right? Because you can have experience with losing, and that teaches you what you don't want to do anymore. But winning is something that you have to continue doing. Little cue shots. The first baseman, Diamond Williams, she takes it to the bag. Bailey Zeitler retired. But Georgia Tech strikes for two runs on three hits. They leave a couple. And through one in Atlanta, the Yellow Jackets are out on top. First year head coach, Lindsey Fico. Spent the last three years coaching at Santa Fe College in the junior college ranks down in Florida. Played her college ball at the University of Florida. She's a middle infielder for the Gators. And now in her first year as a Division I head coach. Went 70 and 58 in Santa Fe College, which is also in Gainesville, Florida. And inherited a, a team and a program she feels like can win at a high level in the Southern Conference. And I think when we spoke to her before the game, that was her big message. She said, hey, we can, we can win big here. I feel confident in that, given both you know, the conference, the resources, and, and where we're located in Macon. Big swing and a miss from Kylie Helm. Quickly 0-2. Blake Nelliman struck out on the side on 14 pitches in the first. Yeah, didn't just strike out the side. I mean, she's locating really well in the zone right now. It's she's got good stuff, and when she's locating, it's a problem. That's what's so fun to watch about players at this level because they can throw a curveball and a screwball, it can look like it's locating to the same exact place. It can come out of the hand, even looking very similar, and yet breaks two different directions. Uh -huh. Screwball, of course, going to break arm side. Curveball going to break the left side. Right. And then when you can locate it to both sides of the plate, that's just dangerous. Don't need much more than that. No. <laughs> Good battle here by Kylie Helm. This is her second start of the year. Next pitch will be number seven. Helma Jr. from Pineville, Missouri. Sometimes good old fashioned rise, huh? Yeah. Fourth strikeout for Nelliman. Just that old thing. <laughs> and I mean, this is what we're talking about. So, out of the hand, it can appear like it's going to be at the top of the strike zone, especially when you've been getting yep. nothing but level plane oh, pitches yeah. your entire at bat, and then all of a sudden it mixes in and it just shoots up. Yeah, the first pitch strike there on Tori Hedgecock. Out of Lowndes High School in Valdosta. Where she was a first team all state performer. And set the single season record for home runs as a junior. So again, power, that's one of the things Coach Fico is trying to bring to this Mercer program. Don't want to sacrifice all the speed necessarily, but really looking for more balance. That's where you get those breakout innings, right? Yep. You get a couple of speedy players on and then a big hit, and then all of a sudden that's how you completely change the shape of a game. And how about this stat too, Tori Hedgecock a freshman at Mercer. She has struck out more this season than she did her entire senior year of high school. I mean, Tells you the difference between college and high school it, softball. It, uh, exactly. <laughs> well, it wasn't like she went to a small high school either. I mean, Lowndes yeah, no, completes Lowndes, at a high level. Sure. But it is a, college I mean, softball is a little different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is a, an adjustment for everyone. Um, but that just goes to show you, it's just such a yeah. big difference. 
Mercer as a team has yet to put a ball in play against Nelliman. Although some good at bats at least from Helm and Hedgecock here in the second, fouling off some two strike offerings. Bears are 24 and 23 last year. Three two pitch. Ball four, and that's the first base runner for Mercer, a walk. I think walks are going to be kind of the story of the day. Look at the Tech defense. How about that three true freshmen in the outfield today? I love to see it. Mm -hmm. A little more experience on the infield, all returning players. You got to do a lot of running as an outfielder, yeah. so. <laughs> those young legs. Those yo get those young <laughs> legs out there. Let them do all the running. Kenley Harvey, a senior. Man, what a play she made at second base the, on Emma Cow to begin the game. Just remarkable. It's kind of overshadowed by those two runs Tech put up. But. Yeah, but, I mean, this dirt is not necessarily the easiest dirt to read bounces off of, and so just working against so many elements. Started playing softball at the age of five. That'd be pretty wild to her. She's in her senior year of college ball now. Ball and two strikes. Down goes Harvey. Fifth strikeout for Nelliman. Yeah, I mean, Nelliman was leaning primarily on her screwball to be her put out pitch. And, and here you see this one's breaking across the plate away from the hitter. Hard to see there if it was just like a really nice located outside drop yeah. ball or maybe if it had a little bit of curve to it. But that's kind of the thing, like, I think I've probably said this before too. You can't get too caught up in like categories of pitches. Yeah. Screw chain or screw curve, rise yes. curve. It's more seam and, and then release point and how the ball releases out of your hand. And as a hitter, that's how you have to kind of like identify, and especially with a pitcher like Nelman, if you can identify or or pick a side of the plate, however you need to do it, so that you have an approach. And you're not just swinging at anything that looks decent. That's how you can find success. And you base that off of your strengths or weaknesses as a hitter, too. So, like, if I know I'm really good at hitting outside pitches, I'm going to just sit the outside part of the plate, adjust my timing accordingly. Did you always think of, of pitchers' repertoires as seam and break, or did you come into college thinking, okay, she has a curveball or she has a rise ball? Or, oh, I mean, no, When, when no, did you no. make that change? That takes, I mean, that takes practice, uh, yeah. of course, and, like, resources, too, because if you think about it, for at least my generation of softball players, and we can get back to this in another inning because it looks like we're... Yeah, uh, Blake Nelman's <laughs> going to say, you know what, you've seen enough. I'm going back <laughs> in the dugout. Six strikeouts through two innings. Two nothing. Bottom of the second inning, Georgia Tech, 2 nothing lead over the Mercer Bears. A look at head coach Eileen Morales, one of the all-time greats here at Georgia Tech in the middle of the infield. And uh, her team has made a nice habit of putting up runs in the first inning this year. That's four straight games. They've scored in the first. I feel like if you were to ask head coaches one thing, one thing you want your team to do consistently, How about that? Ooh. Good play that time. Auburn Dupree nabbed it. Her bunt attempt, new pitcher in as well. Great bunt attempt there. It's Hannah Pitts has come on the pitch. Yeah, if you were to ask coaches one thing, one thing for your team to do, I feel like it would be score. Score, score first. <laughs> score in the first inning. Okay. Obviously, like, score because you got to win, but, like, score in the first inning yeah, specifically. Yep. Ball one on Ella Edgman. 
It's a trio of freshmen in the outfield. Edgman batting in the ninth spot. Two for eight on opening weekend. Ball on a strike. But going back to a, a topic we had in the top of the second, Sam, when did you start to think of opposing pitchers as more of throwing, focusing on the seams or the break as opposed to putting pitches in boxes? I mean, I think kind of to the point that you made about, uh, you know, a player could be a, a dominant player in high school and then you go into college and you might not necessarily do quite as well right away. There's so much time and attention. This is your full-time job, yeah. right? The expectation is that you are practicing, playing. This is, you have two jobs. You're a full-time student athlete, or student, and you're a full-time athlete. And you have a lot more time to be able to practice. You watch a lot of film. You you practice in scrimmages and such, picking up tendencies and, and, and watching so that you can understand pitches before you see them live, and then you take reps. Um, so... You know, you don't necessarily have the resources or the exposure to be able to do those things until you get to college. You can talk about it, right? Travel ball coaches or when you go to college camps, they start to vocalize that concept to you so that it's not completely brand new. But being able to actually put it to practice and, and execute on it in a game is a completely different thing. Yeah, it's been hit by a pitch. So one out base runner for Georgia Tech as the lineup card flips over. Of all those new resources you found at your disposal as a college player, what was the one that helped you the most? Was it the strength film. training film? film? Film was big for you? Film was big for me, but that's because I'm a very visual person, so I okay. think it's more just like very unique to each player, how you learn, how you understand the game. Um, you know, I was also a head case. I'll be the first person to tell you that. <laughs> so for me, it wasn't necessarily always – you know, more reps. Some players, it's reps. It's trying to get as many reps as you can. For me, sometimes I did more damage if I did more reps because then I just got more in my head. Edgman with her speed moves up to second base. It's so I, I think the point there is that just as much as that you learn about yourself as a player, you identify how you learn, how you improve, how you practice, and you have the time and the coaching to be able to really craft your, your skill, craft your art, which is softball. Two balls and a strike on Emma Kauf. She was robbed of a base hit in the bottom of the first. A great play at second by Kenley Harvey. She hit it right on the screws, though. And now the count swells to three and one. And this is that dangerous spot because you don't want to give a free base to Kauf because then you got AWOL just marching right on up to the plate after. <laughs> <laughs> and Kauf sends this one in the air, deep right center. It's off the wall. Edgman had to hold, so she'll stick at third. She was concerned Madison Headley might run that down at center. It's a double for Kauf which means first base is open. Be curious to see how much they want to pitch to AWOL, but first, how about this swing? Ooh. I mean, what a nice job of timing, timing this up. A lot of power generated, very simple swing, quick to contact, but Kaus' hands is where she, so much craft, finesse, and also power. Two and zero on Trish. True freshman Hannah Pitts on the mound. She started opening day, went all ten innings in a heartbreaking six to five loss. She's been much more of a strike thrower than what we saw from Riley Hickok. In fact. Popped up in the air. Yeah, that's dodging a big time bullet. Big time bullet. Maybe would have liked to have seen it. Well, as I'm saying that, I'm kind of thinking a second about that. I was going to say maybe take maybe take that pitch, but you know, the player before you just got up and hit a shot to the wall. So go, <laughs> go ahead and 
Go ahead and swing at your strike, Seawald. <laughs> you do you. Fair enough. Well, I'll say this, too. Hannah Pitts, you know, we talked about Riley Hickok had walks and batters. Pitts, 10 strikeouts, no walks in 17 in the third innings now this year. Yeah, that's I mean, a good point. You know, if you're going to pitch around anybody, it's been Trish. Big rip for Mallory Black 0-2. Tell you what, if Hannah Pitts can get out of this, that'd be a nice feather in her cap in the first week of her college career. Strike away. But that's a lot of what this non-conference is about for Coach Fico and her team is coming up here to Georgia Tech, going down to Florida State, getting some experience, learning some lessons, and, and hopefully at times, like perhaps right now, building that confidence. Yep. I mean, you're at a spot where Trisha Awald comes up, second and third, you get her out. Now see if you can find a way to finish off the inning. Full count on Mallory Black. And on the fists and muscled into center field. That'll score two runs easily. Kalf got a great jump from second, and it's 4 0 Georgia Tech. In some ways, Black might have been a little jammed on that yeah, pitch. Yeah, definitely a little bit jammed, but I think it's clear in the way her body moves through the swing that she, she was looking for an inside pitch. Maybe it, it creeped in a little bit farther in on her hands than she would have preferred to swing for, but. If you're, if you're looking in and you see it and you have two strikes on you, go ahead and go for it. She clearly could make it work and, and push it to the outfield. That's really all it takes. First runs batted into the season for Black. Now Sarah Beth Allen who walked her first time up. Two runs in the first, two more in the second for Georgia Tech. And all four Georgia Tech runs have scored with two outs. That's big time stuff right yep. there. In the air. And hauled in. 4 nothing Jackets after two. Just a few more weeks and we can take off that beanie. But man, it does look cute though, doesn't it? <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> that is adorable. Georgia Tech and Mercer, a little Tuesday evening baseball here on the flats. And Blake Nelliman back in the circle. She's faced seven hitters. She struck out six of them. And we're still waiting on Mercer to put a ball in play. Here's Rebecca Laudino, who, by the way, holds the Collegiate softball record for the longest hit streak. Wow. Had a 49 game hit streak in 2019. Yeah. At Florida Southwestern Junior College. There you which go. Which is longer than any other hit streak at the NAIA, the D3, D2, or Division I level. I mean, that's big, big time, time yeah. stuff right there. <laughs> Skied in the air. Ella Edgman tracks it down. Well, first ball put in play. First ball put in play. Love the aggressive first pitch bunt yep. action that we had there. You you put that down. That might have been your first base hit of the game. That was good. That was good stuff. Now Madison Headley. Originally signed with Georgia Southern in high school. 
went to Indian River State, then transferred to Mercer in 2020, now in her third year as a Bear. Sometimes it takes time. Find your right spot, yep. find your right fit. There's so much that goes into it. There have been a lot of recruiting rules that have been put in place to try to protect yep. players. And, you know, you're just your kid when you commit. Oh, you're not kidding. Especially in softball. I, I don't think you know, many who aren't necessarily in college athletics don't appreciate how early softball recruiting happens compared to the other sports. I mean, it's usually, what, after ninth grade, you're Oh, committing. yeah, sometimes even before. Yeah. I mean, I remember there were pitchers in our summer leagues that were – talking to coaches, going on visits, and they were yep. freshmen. It's like crazy. Yep. Can't even drive a car. <laughs> but again, you know, I think the the NCAA has responded really nicely, and they've put together rules, and it's hard. And there's change management that goes into implementing rules that impact something so important like yes. recruiting. Because, um, you know, this is head coach's livelihood. And if they feel like they are no longer able to use methods that they have to be able to get really incredible talent, then that can be really scary. Um, but I think everybody agrees that ultimately the players benefit from that because then you're going to have a kid that's a much better cultural fit, that's a lot more sure about the things that they want and a lot more bought into your program. So... There's that, and then, you know, sometimes transferring is necessary to be able to get our kid where they need to be. Payoff pitch. And some of this, I'm sure, is, is Mercer's style anyway. We're seeing some more slapping than what we saw this weekend, but yep. uh, Nelliman not nearly as efficient as she was this weekend, uh, closing in on 50 pitches. Yeah, and especially having a difficult time being consistent about which pitches are working inning to inning. Hadley tries to beat it out, and she will. An infield single, first base hit for Mercer. Might be the bat of the day right there, thus far. Beautiful. I mean, talk about just like a textbook slap. Caught the top of the ball. Identified a good pitch to do that with, too, because with a rise ball pitcher like Nelliman. In on the hands. Saleo steps on second. On to first. An inning-ending double play. Every night she's going to do something special. Two and a half in the books. Georgia Tech leading 4-0. Breast Cancer Awareness Day here at Georgia Tech Softball Pink, adorning both the stands, the fans, a few uh, players wearing their pink shoelaces as well as they take the field, and Tasha Tuff, assistant coach for the women's basketball team, Tasha Butts, uh, diagnosed with breast cancer earlier this academic year, and she has handled it both toughness and grace and uh, an extremely positive attitude and has set an example for all of us uh, here around Georgia Tech. And enjoyed getting her to the softball down where she could throw out the first pitch. But easily, you know, I know we talk about how often Jen Saleo likes to smile for Georgia Tech softball. <laughs> Coach Butts, I mean, she... Every time I see her, she's smiling ear to ear, no matter the circumstance. I don't know it's possible to smile that much. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> and one last shout-out to Georgia Tech women's basketball. A huge game Thursday night against Notre Dame at home as McGinney nearly paints the line down the right field and into the corner. Three and two. And a good job fighting off that two-strike pitch. She seems to have a lot of six, a lot of her success comes from just hitting the contact. Just 
Real simple, hands to wherever the ball is pitched, but her timing is good. Yeah. So hitting to contact, you know, can be difficult in the sense that inside and outside pitches have different timing, right? You have to let an outside pitch get in deeper and you have to hit it deeper in your swing. And so for a player to be able to effectively not only hit both sides of the plate, but also adjust their timing to be able to do that. Uh, those are two separate and distinct yep. skills that are necessary and very impressive for a player who is, you know, in her fifth game as a, as a yellow jacket and as a college softball player. Is that the tool that's impressed you the most with her in these first five games, her hit tool? Right back to the mound, and Pitts can't find it. Right through her fingertips. Looks like she had that one play. That's a tougher play than it looks. Yeah, a tougher play than it looks. Especially, you never know what the spin is going to be like off the with a good hop off the dirt. And it looked like that ball was had a little bit of up spin on it, so it might have had some funny spin. But and that's why you always hustle, kids. And we'll call it an error on Pitts. And a called strike on Jin Saleo. Yeah, I think we, we haven't really seen enough of Mingeni's defensive play to be able to know or speak to what her capabilities are there. A pop up collected by Tori Hedgecock at third. But all around, I would say the Jackets freshmen that they've put in the lineup so far have done a really good job of coming in and being pretty consistent and like I said, hitting to contact with good timing, that's the hardest part about adjusting to college. And now pinch hitter. Here's Grace Connolly. Freshman from Sewanee, Georgia. This will be her first career at bat. And she takes a called strike. Freshman who at North Gwinnett High School, they were the state runners up last year in her senior season. Oh, she dropped the hammer there and sends yeah. the yellow jacket arms and the bullpen scattering. Look out, Clayton, down there, our third base cameraman. Yeah, I would say Pitts definitely noticeably going inside to both lefties and righties. So, you know, we saw Black kind of barrel up on her hands, that one to the, to the outfield. Mingeni, same thing, pulling, pulling pitches down foul down to the right side yep. as a lefty, and now again... Oh, that had some depth on it, yeah. didn't it? Three and two. <laughs> Bring that back over the plate, and that's game over. It's a pretty good spin there from Hannah Pitts. Soft pop, center field. Hadley's got it. Two away. All one on Dupree. It's really been a showcase inning for the Georgia Tech freshman. Side from Saleo, I suppose. A sophomore, but McGinney and then Connolly and now Dupree and Edgman on deck. <laughs> Nifty bunt. No play for the catcher, Tori Ash. And Dupree is safe, so a bunt single and a fielding error by Pitts and put two on with two out. I love this bunt, and I'll tell you what, great adjustment 
at back to at bat because you'll remember Dupree tried to pull a bunt down that right down that first baseline and just put a little too much on it. And now we see exactly what her bunt is capable of, and that's going to be deadly. And a called strike from home plate umpire Heath Walker to Ella Edgman. Freshman from Dunlap, Tennessee. Yeah, it's hitting your spot, back-to-back -back pitches, huh? I'm telling you, I've been really, really impressed with pitch. And in the, in the in inning adjustments of the game plan, and I mean, that could be that, you know, the pitching coach or whoever in the dugout is calling pitches has already identified the, the approach, and so it might not necessarily be end to lefties, end to righties. It might be unique to each player, but she's doing a really nice job locating if you can pitch in, that really opens up a whole bunch of possibilities for it, doesn't you? Well, if you can pitch in, and if you can pitch in to lefties. As a righty. Right. Oh. Yes. Well, that was gross. <laughs> that was uh, gross. That was nasty. Good pitch. Hannah Pitts strands a couple runners. <laughs> What's better than a headband? A balloon headband. <laughs> How about that? You're not going to find that in your average store. Coming down to Neborn Field and some pink pom-poms as well as part of our breast cancer awareness game here in Midtown Atlanta. Wiley Ballard joined by former Yellow Jacket Sam Piranunzi. 4-0 Georgia Tech. And Blake Nelliman looking to get back to work. And a bunt. Drop down. Black charging. Throw to first. Well done. Grace Connolly who has remained in the game at second base, covering for Trish Awald there. Look at this really nice shot by Black, throwing on the run, so not waiting until she gets her momentum back to her back leg. She's able to throw. Goofy. But effective. I love a good throw on the run. That's a sign <laughs> of an athlete. That's, that's good stuff. That just takes me back to playing video games growing yeah. up and Derek Jeter. You always wanted to have oh. Derek Jeter on your team and you just hit a little throw on the run. And Williams chases that pitch up and out of the zone. Right back. Williams, another one of those players that just began playing at such an early age, never stopped. She started T ball at age five, moved to softball at age eight. And she played some other sports, gymnastics, basketball, even cheerleading. But nothing quite got her fired up like softball. Just off the plate. I love that. The sport becomes just so ingrained in who you are as a being. And it's special to be able to do it as a college player and represent a school you love so much. Just across the line. Catch made by Auburn Dupree. And two down. Well, after the first seven Bears didn't even put the ball in play, six strikeouts and a walk, it appears that Mercer's been able to at least make better contact here against Nellman. Is that a change in approach for them, or is that Blake seeking more contact, trying to keep that pitch count down? I think we're definitely seeing more balls around the zone, but to your point, um, a, a visible adjustment, swinging at strikes earlier in counts. We're seeing improved contact on foul balls. So it could also just be a function of timing. We're still so early in the season that uh -huh. that's going to be a, a big factor that a lot of teams battle for still, you know, a week or so longer. Kylie Helm. She put up a fight against Nettleman, but eventually struck out. That looked okay to me. Yeah. <laughs> 
Nelliman locating that screwball again and in and around the zone. We lost it for an inning or two, but it looks like it's, it's back. It's back. <laughs> Gotta give you a queasy feeling if you're a hitter. Yeah. Mercer's had two base runners so far today. A walk to Tory Hedgecock in the second. Hedgecock's on deck. And then Madison Headley, nine hole hitter with a slap base hit. Make it three base runners. It's that firm grounder slithers through into center. So there you go. That's a big adjustment too that we're yeah. seeing is put the ball in play. Anytime that we've seen the Bears successful, it's been super simple, just putting it in play. Think small. Small. Think small. You gotta say it like that sometimes. <laughs> Am I missing something? No. Or did that just, <laughs> just came out okay? You're quoting a movie or no, what that was? No, it wasn't was. a movie. It's just like sometimes with athletes, you got to do silly stuff like oh, that. You gotta, oh, okay. Got to sing it. Got to be a little whatever, goofy. Whatever yeah. you can do to make you remember it. Trying to break out of that myopia. <laughs> oh, two. Yeah, Kawabunga is right. He was on face by that foul ball. Didn't even, didn't even flinch. Wasn't didn't a bit flinch. bothered. It's that 4K camera. He's seen that ball. Probably looks like a, <laughs> like a beach ball down there. <laughs> See it in slow motion. Rounder, Connolly another chance. Smooth as silk. Two out single, but nothing more for Mercer. To the bottom of the fourth, Georgia Tech with a comfortable lead. Every year, it seems like. That one's been there a while. <laughs> Four nothing, Georgia Tech, bottom of the fourth inning. Live from Newborn Field, a chilly early spring afternoon, we'll call it. Early spring. It's it's false spring for false those spring. of you who are from the south. <laughs> you know what we're talking about. You you pulled your shorts out this weekend. Your sunscreen. You got a little tan. It got up to almost eighty degrees on Saturday, and now you're back it out. Didn't, it didn't get up to eighty, did it? It was in the seventies. I thought it was high sixties. Good pitch. Just Mr. Spot, but Tori Ash liked the location. Catcher with a point back to Hannah Pitts, who's working on. Her third inning of relief here. And that ball hit high in the air down the right field line. Ran out of gas. And there's one down. Great pitch. Nice curveball came in right hard at her hands. Now, Trisha Awald. One thing Pitts has done a really nice job of is throwing first pitch strikes. Yep. I think that's, you know, been one of the biggest reasons why we've seen the Yellow Jackets slow down in production because they're behind in the count. Tech's got four runs on six hits. They get seven hits as Trish Awald finds a hole in the infield. Three of four runs for Georgia Tech today have scored with two outs. Including the big two-run single from Mallory Black in the second. She's two for two today. She's driven in three of the four runs. Also had an RBI single in the first. The first pitch strike. Hey, 
Pop-up, foul ground. Williams into the tarp. Great effort. Looks like she's okay. Gotta love that That was that fearless, though, in a visiting ballpark. And, I mean, she stayed on it. She tracked that all the <laughs> way down to the, the final look. I don't think she saw it coming. No, I don't think she did either. Glad she's okay. Even more props to her for uh -huh. that. Comes inside. I think that sets up this next pitch. Go back in or you think go away? Or go up. I say go back in. Or go off speed. Out. <laughs> Fine. You're the hard nib. Ah, soft, hey, soft away. Listen, listen. <laughs> I was, I'm not a pitcher, and I, obviously, I did not go into coaching. By no means would I have been hired as a pitching coach. There it is. You're, just, you're a little early. Three and two. Now, the full count here on Black. She's worked a three ball full count, all three at bats. I know it's early, and you know, Hannah Pitts is a freshman pitcher here, and there are going to be some pretty serious arms when you get into ACC play. But to me, Mallory Black showed me nothing in the first five games that she can't handle this three-hole responsibility. I'm telling you, I've been so impressed. Yes. Disciplined, worked counts deep, saw a lot of pitches, and then hits to all parts of the field, too. Done a really, really nice job. Yeah, I feel good about if I'm Coach Morales about what I've seen from her thus far. I feel good about Sarah Beth Allen, too. Stepping into that cleanup spot. Two-time first-team All-State at Jackson County High School. Changing the eye level there at the high strike, two and two. And by the same token, Hannah Pitts, I know it hadn't been one, two, three innings, but you're liking the, the package of pitches she has. Another foul ground opportunity, and that one sails out of play. Rebecca Laudino in her first year at Mercer there in right field. First semester at Mercer. Transferred in during the offseason. Coach Morales, a few words for Sarah Beth Allen. As Allen climbs back in the box. And yep. I said they hit her. That's a good take either way. Yeah. So that'll load the bases for Emma Mangini. Team's the leader in RBI through the first five games. Did you see it? I'm gonna be honest, I didn't I didn't see it. But <laughs> that looked like uh, one that might have been more of a of a uh, audio cue for the home plate umpire. He's yeah. walking or anything else, and now they're gonna talk it over here. It's either gonna be a hit by Pitts to load the bases or a 3-2 count on Sarah Beth Allen. And it no, doesn't look like there was anything that yeah. convinced anybody otherwise. Yeah, that, that, was, that was more by the sound than I think it was the... And it could have. It could have, like, nicked your jersey or something, and we just didn't see that. Yep. But um, either way, it wasn't a strike, so, you know. Ben Guinea. 
Well, this is certainly a plate appearance where you want to throw a first pitch strike, and Pitts does that. Freshman has been a run producer this first week. And she will continue to be if that stays fair. It doesn't. Oh, she pulled Man. the trigger a little early. A little early, a little out in front, but not bad. Still got a lot of power through on that inside pitch. And the good news is you're working with one out, so. Protecting the plate. Yeah, I think you're definitely going to see her experience level come through on, on swings like that where still learning the strike zone, still learning, you know, collegiate opposing pitcher and, you know, tendencies and things like that. In some cases, I mean, we, we touched on her you know, natural contact abilities. When you're able to make contact at her rate, it's oh, hard yeah. not to swing. That and also, <laughs> I can hit that. <laughs> it's not realistic to think that she could even put that in play. It was a clear ball off the plate, but and she's made a really good adjustment. It's been the same pitch, same spot yep. three times. First time she fouled it off, the next two times she made the adjustment. But I would even say with a player like this, it's not unrealistic to say she could put that in play even for a base hit. Popped up. And that'll land on the first row of the stands. Or I should say of the bowl seating, the bench seating. Still two and two. Chopped to second. And bobbled and everybody's safe. Harvey couldn't control it. There was a moment where she thought maybe I should tag the runner going a second, then she wanted to come home, and then yeah, all of a sudden the ball got away from her. Definitely looked like she was trying to rush to the tag and just kind of didn't didn't do the didn't secure the ball first. Trying to do too many things at once. But I love this kind of choked up approach from Mingini. Poke it, put the ball in play. Called strike on Jin Saleo. We'll see how they score that. I assume it'd be an error. The question is, was she trying to go home or trying to make the tag? One and one on Saleo. Base is still loaded. Five nothing jackets. Saleo already with a double today. She laced one into right center. And she'll drive one in the air to left. Rosado makes the catch, runner coming home, and she will score. Mallory Black in, makes it 6 nothing. Georgia Tech. Two going now in the inning. Yeah, nice little sacrifice fly by Saleo there with less than two outs. We'll take that, right? That's production. So with the error and then the sacrifice fly, all of a sudden you got two runs. Uh, officially no error on that play. They're called a fielder's choice. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, she secured the ground ball, but then it looked like on the transfer uh, to tag or just as she was transferring her body weight to make her next move. McConnelly takes ball one. Tech scored two in the first, two in the second, two here in the fourth. And a softly hit liner is going to be flagged down by Annie Potter. Great snag. And that'll end the inning. Who says you can't wear a hat and a balloon at the same time? Nobody. Nobody, that's right. There's no rules. Six nothing, Georgia Tech, top of the fifth inning. Blake Nelliman goes back to work. Six, seven, and eight spots are due up. And Kenley Harvey struck out her first time. Takes a called strike, going one. Jackets have won four straight against Mercer. They are 29-3 all-time 
when playing at home against Mercer. As Harvey shows butt but takes a called strike. That's a nice pitch. Would have been a good one to go ahead and bunt. Not super uh, advantageous to wait till you have a strike on uh, you to do you know the show and kind of check your defense kind of a gig. Ooh, and a hit by pitch, and that one got her flush. It'd be on the it's back just of cold her left enough. shoulder. Yeah, exactly. Just cold enough to give that one a little zest. I'll tell you what, that happens in the first inning. I'm not saying it feels good, but <laughs> it feels a little warmer. Yeah, feels a little warmer. You're uh, just stretched. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Not fun. First meeting between these two teams since March 11th, 2020. Wow. Yeah, which we all, we all know what was going on around that time. Mm -hmm. We don't really talk Ball about one. that anymore. <laughs> Did not meet last year. Good swing by Ash. Making her 90th career start this evening. You know, one of the reasons she chose Mercer was she wanted to be a dermatologist. There you go. And Mercer, great medical program in Macon. One and two. at the 70 pitch mark. And there is her seventh strikeout. She struck out six of the first seven that hadn't struck at anybody since until then. Tori Ash was her last victim. That was back in the second inning. It's 26 strikeouts against just six walks in the year for Nelliman. Hey, you know, off to a good start. Now Rebecca Laudino, who's played multiple times in the Brazilian national team. I still, I still can't get over the hit streak. <laughs> what an accolade. That was her freshman year. At Even better. Yeah, Florida Southwestern. She was an All-American at the junior college level. Her team was ranked number one in the country. And Over the course of that hit streak, 49 games, her team went 48 and 1. Yeah, I mean, well. They're pretty good. <laughs> one and two. She originally actually was going to transfer to Louisiana Lafayette after her second year of junior college, but with COVID, and she was back in Brazil, and a little bit of uncertainty whether or not, when, if she'd be able to get back to the States. Filleted out of play. She opted to play another year at junior college this past spring in 2021. Hit 485, stole 33 bags in 52 games. Then transferred to Louisiana Lafayette in the fall, but transferred to Mercer a couple months ago. And she belts one to deep center. Edgman going back onto the track. She makes an over-the-shoulder grab. Probably the hardest hit ball of the night for Mercer, but Ella Edgman runs it down. This is a beautiful catch. I mean, in a full sprint, right around the warning track, too, which can get a little bit dicey. And this was rising and going away, so it had spin on it, no doubt. But you see Edgman keeping her hand close to her body enough so she can... Locate and smack. Great catch. Coming from a Yellow Jacket center fielder. Hey. Big rip and a miss by Madison Headley on a one. Is that a ball? Let me phrase it this way. That seems like a, an impossible catch if you don't read it about perfectly. Well, I mean, it's difficult to articulate over, over just broadcast, right? But yeah. if you were to stick your hands out in front of you and you were to try to catch a ball, you... 
out of the corner of your eye, you see your hand, and you uh -huh. also see the ball. When you're making that catch, your hand is completely behind your body. You have no... You know, you, you can't see that out of the corner of your eye whatsoever. That's not in your peripherals. So you're just guessing. You're just making a snap. And it takes an incredible amount of hand-eye coordination and practice. Ask Coach Morales, you know, how did you settle on Esmond getting the start in center field on opening day? She said she's special. Blake Nellon's pretty special also. That's eight strikeouts through five innings. Middle of the fifth. It's Georgia Tech six, Mercer nothing. Dusk in Atlanta, Georgia Tech six, Mercer nothing. Trying to stay warm in this early season midweek matchup. Also yes. supporting breast cancer awareness on cool this off. Tuesday Quit. night. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Hannah Pitts heating up, though. She has given the Bears now three innings of relief. Hadn't been perfect. She's given up some runs, but the stuff's looked good. She's had some bright spots. Again, just her first week of college softball. Same with Auburn Dupree, the hitter, a true freshman. From Gadsden, Alabama. Breaking ball dances low. So two runs, and that'll do it. Georgia Tech looking for yet another run rule victory. I had one against Villanova on Saturday. Sprayed foul. Into the bullpen. Pitts, her senior year at Auburn High School in Auburn, Alabama. 12 and 3, a 0.64 ERA. She was the uh, Opelika Auburn News Softball Pitcher of the Year. And that was her fifth year on the varsity team. Began playing varsity in eighth grade for Hannah Pitts. And just like she was thrown into the fire earlier in her varsity high school career, she's been thrown into it here as a true freshman at Division I. Battle by Auburn Dupree. Yeah, we've seen a handful of foul balls. Something that Dupree is been doing really well oh, is yeah. attacking strikes. Yep. That'd be one of the takeaways for me through these first five games for Georgia Tech is really two things. One, they haven't chased many pitches out of the zone. Two, they have no problem going the other way. Gobbled up by Potter and Dupree tried to leg it out. But a step or two short. Yeah, this is nice. It looks like maybe what she was going for is a little bit of a soft slap. And so take a tiny bit off of that, you know, say that as though it's super easy to do, <laughs> right? But that's that split second um, longer that it would take for Potter to get there. And that, that's, you know, one or two steps through first. Ball one on Ella Edgman. By the way, they've actually gone back and adjusted 
that play in the fourth inning that was scored a fielder's choice. They are going to call it an E4. Yeah. So that's the second error, and that ought to create at least one, maybe two unearned runs, depending on how exactly they score it. That feels like a fair call because I, I don't know that the ball is ever necessarily secure in her glove. She never really had control over it. Two and two on Ella Edgman. With a chance for Potter. Boy, she's quick. Top of the lineup up. Yeah, you know, hats off. Hats off the pitch. She's doing a really nice job of locating that outside pitch in the perfect spot that you can't really do much with it as a lefty. Strike one on Kalf. <laughs> Kalf one for three with that double today. the ball hard a couple of times. One was to deep right, and the other out she made was a brilliant play by Kenley Harvey at second. Yeah, you know, there's some trees that are a nice backdrop for center field here <laughs> at Shirley Mewborn, and I saw a bird fluttering up, up in one of the trees just beyond center field. Kind of felt like a little bit of a target moment for Kyle <laughs> out there. I was like, you, you better move, buddy. Yeah, we got a nice shot. It was just to the right of the 220, short in the trees. Yep. That's a tough day. Pitch number 100. Here he goes. He's drilled a long way. Look out, birds. I tried to tell him. And it is gone. Emma Kalf straightaway center field. And Sam Piranunzi. You saw it before <laughs> it happened. I mean, you can't, you can't look at that swing and tell me that wasn't coming. What a beautiful swing. And with a player as talented as Kyle, if you know she's she's been studying, she's been her timing. She was waiting for that pitch to come just a little bit middle plate, maybe a tiny bit even outside. Let it in deep and drive it. And Awal drives one deep left field. That's off the top of the wall. She pulls into second with a double that close to ending the game. Yeah, I think for Awald, kind of going back to my notes, I see a lot of screwballs outside early in the counts for her, and so she's looking for that, right? And she's driving that opposite field, so that's a student of the game right there. And she continues to go the other way. That's about the third double this year she's hit off the wall yeah. in left. Ariella Jackson's going to pinch run. She represents the Run rule clinching run. And Mal Black will try and get this done in five innings. And ball one. What I love about Ewald though is that in her last at bat, she you'll remember she had a ground ball single in the four four five hole. Three four hole. What am yep. I talking three, about? Three four, yep. Three four hole. And um you know, rolled over it a little bit. Yep. So it was a base hit, but it wasn't her best stuff. So she went back to the dugout, thought, I'm, I'm sitting outside next time, uh -huh. and, and went for it. Four or five hole. What am I, new here? That's Well, if they don't put a six out there, that's a pretty big <laughs> hole, I suppose. 3-0 <laughs> on Black. She's driven in three of Georgia Tech's seven runs today. There's a strike. Yeah. 
Ball four. It'll be up to Sarah Beth Allen now. And Caroline Davis with a chance to pinch hit. She replaces Sarah Beth Allen. Take strike one. Davis is one for three at the plate this year. Flair to short, that'll be caught, and we go to the sixth. But Georgia Tech adds a run. Solo homer from Emma Cow. Top of the sixth inning, cha-cha slide time. Seven nothing, Yellow Jackets in front. Yeah, she's got the hands on the knees. I've seen a lot of these uh, yeah. balloon headbands. <laughs> Your favorite, Wiley. I love them. Tried to use my balloon headband as a helmet once or twice. It didn't work very well. <laughs> it, it popped. <laughs> it was loud. <laughs> All right, strike one. Eddie Potter, shortstop, falls behind 0-2. Well, so we saw Nelliman set a career high with 13 strikeouts on Friday. We thought she might challenge that today. She struck out six of the first seven. Eight total, though, as she enters the sixth. Well struck, backhand chance to Leo. Got to be quick, and she is. And Hey, what? Give Caroline Davis some props there with a stretch. Yeah. You can always count on that. When you have a shortstop like Saleo who can make so many things happen, got to also shout out that assist from your teammate there. Great job. That's off the bench, too, now. Yeah. <laughs> she pinch hit in the last half inning. Speaking of pinch hitters, here's Morgan Hall, freshman from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Ball one. But so far for Mercer, they've had four base runners, two hits, a walk, and a hit by pitch. And one and one. All listed as both a catcher and an outfielder. That's becoming a trend, apparently. 2-1, uh -huh. backhand stab. Blacks throw in time. How about the left side of this Tech infield? I'm telling you what. It is a joy to watch. Nice little backhand. I love the positioning of Black there, just far enough off the line to still be able to scoop that up with a uh -huh. good backhand, but definitely covering a lot of ground. And the first pitch strike dotted on the outside corner on Diamond Williams. Good as Nelman's been. I'm sorry. I could have just stood up. 
Only two hits and one run allowed this year. Entering play today. Still looking for that first seven inning shutout of the season. Season ERA currently at .4. And a chopper. Tricky hop for Saleo. Handles it, and that time, yeah. not going to get there in time. Jen did all she could, but she had to go back, field it deeper in the infield. Sure. She's already positioned really nicely to minimize the damage of this one. You see how her first step is back. A lot of times shortstops, their first instinct might be to take a, a step to the left, and so that helps her field this hop really well. Um, but unfortunately, not a whole lot of time. Kylie Helm grounds this one into center field. Back-to-back -back hits. Back-to-back -back hard hits, too. Yes. And for the first time tonight, Mercer has a runner in scoring position. Tori Hedgecock now with two outs. Element on phase keeps pounding the zone. Steals a strike on the inside corner. I beg your pardon, he called that first pitch ball, didn't he? What thing are we leaving? I mean, no, it is 0 2. Yeah, he just, uh, yeah, Heath Walker just did the count up 0 2. I, I was going to say, I don't know how you could have called that up. That's what I was saying. <laughs> I was like, hold on a second. All right, 0 2. Cal from Nelman said, yeah, it's 0 2. Wiley was right. That's what, that's what they said down there. <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> no, I doubt it. No, uh, I can no. guarantee you that you they didn't. <laughs> There's no need for doubt. And the dirt runner takes off from second. Throw down late. Boy, aggressive base running by Diamond Williams. Now runners on the corners. And one and two on Hedgecock. Now we're in a first and third situation. Yep. There are two outs, but you see Kalp go out from behind the plate and make a call. Laser in the center field for a base hit, and Mercer is on the board. Two out magic, three straight two out hits after Mercer had just two hits in the first five innings, and Hedgecock scorches an RBI single. Yeah, some super solid contact, no less, from Hedgecock here as we see her go down and get that pitch. Try her right back up the middle. First pitch strike on Kenley Harvey. Well, I felt like even the outs, particularly that backhanded play by Mallory Black, those balls were hit hard as well. A lot of very solid contacts. We've seen the Bears definitely make a big timing adjustment, swinging at better pitches. You know, Nelliman leaving pitches more out over the plate, maybe not finding corners quite as much of the strike zone. And for the first time this year, Blake Nellman's going to go to the triple-digit pitch count. And on the fist, and it's caught calmly by Jin Saleo to end the inning. But one run on three hits. The Bears crack the goose egg. Home half of the sixth as night has fallen here in Midtown Atlanta. George Tech up by six. Mercer tacked on their first run in the top half. And now Hannah Pitts back to work. Riley Hickok got the start, gave up two runs in the first. It's been Pitts ever since. And Emma Mangini from the left side takes a called strike. 
Saleo and Connolly to follow. Well, you're feeling pretty good. You can drop two of those in for yeah, a couple strikes, right? I was just about to say, Pitts has done a really nice job. I mean, we haven't seen that off speed a whole no. lot, but. Serve down the left field line, Emma McKinney. <laughs> Tell you what, I, I don't think you could really detect a difference in her confidence in a fresh count or a two strike count. Yeah. I mean, she's done a good job of hitting all parts of the zone. That's that same pitch that we were talking about. And her last at bat where she, she swung a ball or two off the plate and kind of fouled it, but she can hit that and she can hit it well. She's got a bright career ahead of her. And if you're hitting a pitch there, I mean, I, I think when that ball leaves her hand, it's either this is ball one or it's a strikeout. Yeah, tip your cap. Is, <laughs> tip your I cap. mean, worst case, it's a foul sure. tip, but it sure as heck getting a base hit to mm -hmm. left. Right. But that's what it was as Cowden pinch runs for Mangini. Let's talk about the differences between High school softball and college softball. I bet the true freshman pits is she's not used to that turning into a base hit. Sure. Opposite field, no less. Saleo tries to drop a bunt. Strike one. So Cowden at first and Saleo at the dish. Her defensive play. On Saturday, got her in Sports Center's top 10 this weekend. Which one? Yeah, Cowden takes off for second. Good point. Stolen base for Kennedy Cowden. Nice jump by Cowden. Slides in nicely. Yeah, which one? There were three that come yeah. to mind that could have competed. Foul again, they'll say Saleo was in the box, two and two. I think the one that got her in there was that leaping double play. Where she went up with both the skyscrapers, hauled it in and doubled off the runner. They go to the left side again. Cowden has to hold, and there's one out. Yeah, I think you're right too, it was definitely that. Double play in the hole. Connolly's over two. It's really funny watching those replays too, especially the highlights that make the social media pages because you do what you always do such a nice job of covering <laughs> what's happening as it happens. And then I I don't I don't even know what to say. <laughs> There's no words. There's no words that you can use in the moment to capture how shocking it is, the you, plays that she's making. Have you ever tried a wow? I, 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 I get that one a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I go back and listen. You're, like, covering it nicely. It's exciting. And I'm like, wow. That's my, my contribution to okay. that highlight clip. Two balls and a strike up. Grace Conley. I think wow works. I think. Yeah. Whoa. Wiley you know, Ballard and Owen Wilson are calling it wow. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to go there. <laughs> Two, one, zipped. Off the tug top of the dugout. That was a rifle. Yeah, by the way. Yeah, I think that yeah, hit the camera. Clayton, did we that? We good? Thumbs up. Thumbs we up good? or down? Thumbs up? We're All good. right. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, we're golden. Nobody I'd rather have behind that camera than Clayton. This ball is hit high, deep left field. Good night. Wow. That's your ball game. Grace Connolly's first career home run is a run rule walk off. I mean, talk about smoked dinger. She rocket. That was. Probably just as high as it was far, man. Did it get out of the park in a hurry? Wow. Wow, indeed. Nine to one, your final score. One more look. Went down and got it. Launched. Good for you. First career hit.
She won't forget that one anytime soon. Georgia Tech is 5-0 and with a run rule victory over their in-state foe, the Mercer Bears. For Sam Piranunzi, I'm Wiley Ballard saying so long and good night. Your final score, Georgia Tech 9, Mercer 1.